It is a widely held notion that religion and science are inherently in conflict with one another. The frequency with which one runs across quotes, such as the following, generally attributed to the atheist philosopher Bertrand Russell, attests to the fact that this notion is in fact widely held. Religion is something left over from the infancy of our intelligence. It will fade away as we adopt reason and science as our guidelines. It is a simple task to find evidence that many in the mainstream accept such a view. The Huffington Post recently published an article about the Roman Catholic Church's co-hosting a science exhibition in Galileo's hometown beginning in March this year. The comment box for this article is flooded with thoughts such as the following. The Catholic Church is trying to get good PR, like lots of corporations, with this abuse conference and the science display, when they are the perpetrators of the abuse and the lack of encouragement for any intellectual field. Religion depends on magical thinking. Any science it accepts, it does so only by force or lack of choice. However, if one is to examine the historical roots of science over the centuries, it is obvious that Christians and their promotion of education and intellectual endeavors have continually played key roles in the field of science as we know it today. To support this claim, let's consider now the life work of one pioneer of science from the High Middle Ages, Robert Gross Tate. Gross Tate lived from about 1168 to 1253, about 400 years before Galileo was born and was considered a highly influential scholar in many different fields of study. He wrote an astonishingly large number of works, more than 50 of which are easily accessible online in their original Latin. Georgetown University's professor Neil Lewis has given a list of 13 of these works which were scientific in nature, which included material on astronomy, sound, and mathematics. While Lewis argues against the claim that Gross Tate employed the scientific method as we know it today, there appears to be little doubt that he played a key role in the advancement of the sciences and influenced other scholars who were pivotal in the sciences, such as Roger Bacon, a Franciscan friar who is reported to have promoted the modern scientific method. Furthermore, Lewis gives evidence that Gross Tate's works exhibited clearly a recognition of the significance of mathematics, in particular geometry and understanding nature. Lewis illustrates this through a citation of Gross Tate's work entitled on lines, angles, and figures. The consideration of lines, angles, and figures is of the greatest utility since it is impossible for natural philosophy to be known without them. Again, while I'm not here trying to make a case that Gross Tate's theories regarding nature were always correct, and we must in truth admit that neither are all the ones scientists hold today, it is clear that, as Lewis puts it, he, quote, was deeply concerned with the detailed investigation of natural phenomena, close quote, and was highly influential in the progression of the field of science, while at the same time being a deeply religious man. His many areas of expertise included both philosophy and theology. He served as bishop for the Roman Catholic Church in the Diocese of Lincoln in England from 1235 to 1253.